The ship's late, Tower. We had storms at sea. That's a very unfriendly ocean, Philip. Well, this land isn't exactly on speaking terms either. Well, perhaps you found someone who listened to reason. I've got just the man. Is he amenable? He's meaner than all get out. Your description intrigues me. I'm anxious to meet him. Put it back and move your queen, Senator. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, Thanks. What do you say that fellow's name was again? Tower. Nicholas Tower. Huh? He's a foreigner, ain't he? Yeah. Oh, I'm sick of waiting. That's a black deuce. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. <clears throat> They'll be here if something doesn't happen. Red, you better stay here and watch, just in case. Gentlemen, this is Nicholas Tower. Mr. Tower, this is Senator Tucker of the state legislature. It's a great honor to know you, sir. It is I, who am honored, Senator. And this is Morell. Hi. Philip has been telling me about you, Mr. Morell. He thinks uh, you are just the man we need. Well, if you're satisfied, I reckon I am. So all we got to do is come to terms. I already know what I'm supposed to do. Yes, we've gone over the ground pretty thoroughly with Morell. Still, our plans must be definite and thoroughly understood by all of us. Remember, I just arrived in America. Oh, yes, yes, of course, sir. After all, we are depending on you to lead us in whatever we do. Thank you, Senator. And I assure you that all who wait in this great adventure will be amply rewarded when we have succeeded in bringing order out of, let us say, your democratic chaos. I don't cut into your fancy language, Tar. Now, let's talk plain. We're all in this together. If this country busts up, your government's figuring on picking up some of the pieces. California in particular, ain't that it? Putting it rather bluntly, yes. We're all out to feather our own nest, only it ain't feathers we're after. It's gold. You're hiring my guns and the guns of men like me to cut all lines of communication from the coast east. That's my job as I savvy it. If I'm wrong, say so. Your understanding is excellent, my friend. I think we will go far together. Well, that's more like it. Now, here's what I got in mind. We'll operate out of Hayes City. The Overland stage trail passes through here going east and west, across the mountains and through the engine country. I'll have a powwow with old Chief Red Wolf. Very good. Here, Huston. Here, Huston. Here, Huston. Here, Huston. Kettle fan in the wind for Can't be nothing else but trouble, Uncle Gabby. Oh, there you go, always calamity howling. We should have christened you Calamity Jane in the first place. What's wrong, Tea Kettle? Big fight at relay station. Hostile Indian? No, white men. How many? Sounds like raiders. What in tarnation we sitting here then for? We'd be riding right smack dab into trouble. Well, we've ridden smack dab into trouble before, ain't we? You stay here with the horses. Me and the engines will go. Oh, he ain't leaving me here alone, chaperone in no Bronx. Little Fox, you stay with the horses. Big Bear, you come with us.
He's killed two of the gang and winged five of them. They've left. Let's get out of here. It was a pretty good fight while it lasted. There's one that needs help. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Make it easy, son. You're pretty well used up. Did they get the horses? You mean your relay critters? No, they didn't. What do you know about that? The poor galoot ain't got a pint of blood left, and he's worrying about a bunch of cayuses. I ain't mistaken, them was Morrell's raiders. You didn't drive them off yourself, did you? I was alone. The company was sending a helper tomorrow. Well, turn to fight a bleeped it. You must have gone plumb wild. What's your name? Hickok. Bill Hickok. Don't sit there asking questions. Let's get him inside. What's happened? The Morrell gang started an argument with a wild man, and he sent him a packet. I'm Elliot of the Chronicle. Do you mean to say that one man brought about their defeat? There was no defeat to it. He just done for him with his gun single-handed. And if he don't get a doctor pretty soon, he's going to be done for himself. I'm an army doctor. Where is he? Inside the cabin. Then you didn't actually see the battle. No, but powder smoke was still smelling up the air when we got here. It's incredible. One man against ten. Why, it's the greatest single encounter since uh, uh, Horatius at the bridge. Horatius? Say, you mean that old coot down on the toll bridge across the Cimarron? Has he been in a fight again? No, no. Horatius was a Roman soldier. Where was he Roman to? Why didn't he stay with his outfit? Listen, Horatius held a bridge against an army some thousand years ago, as I recall it. Say, you're holding your age pretty good, mister. Look, I, if... Maybe I better stick to questions. What did you say the relay station man's name was? Bill Hickok. Wild Bill, I'd call him. See, there's a good idea. I'll, I'll play him up as Wild Bill. Wild Bill Hickok. <laughs> the government sure knew their man when they sent us Lieutenant Hickok to handle this raider situation. If it hadn't been for him, we'd have had to suspend his overland service. Hickok certainly earned that reward money. And I'm going to see that he gets it. With this bank draft goes the personal gratitude of myself and partner. Say, this is a lot of money, Mr. Waddell. Well, it's not much for what you've done. Jumping G. Hossifat, a million dollars. Two thousand, Uncle Gabby. Oh, what's the difference? When figures has more than two goose eggs behind them, it's all the same to folks like us. Well, we hope to see you up and about soon, Bill. Thanks. Take good care of Gabby. Oh, you depend on me, Calamity. Hey, how about them horses we brung to restock the relay? Well, I'll send a couple of men down and take them off your hand. You're rich, Bill. What are you going to do with all that money? I'd have had good use for it a few months ago. I was bent on buying a home then. You must have been figured on getting hitched. Yep. What happened, Bill? Did she shake you? So hard my teeth rattled. She must have been plumb loco. A nice young feller so much as looked at me. You and... hog tied him quicker than he could have said Louise. Oh, I couldn't marry a feller named Louise. Say, that's what you kept calling when you were... I guess I must have heard you, Bill. I came just as fast as I could. Uncle Gabby, she's hurt. Are you all right? I'm speechless, but I'm sure glad. Uh, just a minute. I want you to meet Miss Mason. Louise, this is Calamity Jane, or a Miss Canary in polite society. Oh, I never get in it, so just call me Calamity. Howdy. How do you do? This is Gabby Whitaker. I'm her uncle. Don't I have the darndest luck? Meaning me? No, that pony's gone lame. We gotta go see about it. We ain't got no lame pony. Well, then come on out and help me trip one. Phil, were you badly hurt? I'd take a shoot in two ways from Sunday to get you here. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. I know I didn't have to, but it helped. You're here. Yes, and I'm sorry. Quarreling about the North and South was silly. A lot of folks are doing it nowadays. Not us. 
From now on, the South is going to have to take care of itself. I'm taking care of you. The North don't know it, but they sure won themselves a victory. I'll have you well in no time. Oh, no hurry. I'm looking forward to a long and slow recovery. It ain't proper to be spying on a young couple of courting. What you doing now? Uncle Gabby, he's a putting his arm around her. He ain't. He is. And now he's kissing her. He is. Is this morale? We're losing time, valuable, every day of it. Why don't we hear from him? Speak of the devil. Look. At the back door tonight, quick, before he comes here now. Right. Come to Tower's office around midnight tonight. The back door will be unlocked. You better not hang around here. how much time we've lost. Where have you been? Did you ever have a bad dose of lead poisoning? No, of course not. Well, it takes a lot of curing. Well, you've taken enough time to recover from a severe case of hanging. Some things men out here don't josh about, Tower. Well, that encounter with Hickok was rather costly, but... Uh... Uh, don't worry. I'll collect for those men. I ain't finished with Wild Bill Hickok. Now, what do you want me to do? Well, take up where you left off. Well, I've got to have men. They ain't to be had without money. We've got plenty of that. All you want if you get results. Philip will fix you up. Now get going and hit those trail up. It's hard. See you. Three queens and a pair of aces. That beats me. <laughs> this is my lucky day, gentlemen. I'd rather lose to you than some Ralph Raiders. Have you seen Hickok? No, I haven't. Why? Read this. I hope nothing serious has happened, Charlie. It hasn't yet, but it could. This is a mighty big responsibility for us to take on with the Ralph Raiders on the rampage again. If it's that important, I ought to know something about what's going on. Why, there's no one here you can't trust. Gentlemen. We've got a big shipment of gold in the company safe. A half a million dollars worth. It came through from California before the Raiders flared up again. Now the government insists we forward it under our own guard. Well, that seems foolhardy. Why not an army convoy? Well, I tried, Bert. They can't spare the men. Now, sir, it's our job. That's why we've got to find Hickok. He shouldn't be hard to find. It's almost sure that he'll be down there at the Parsons' house with that pretty southern girl of his staying. He's going to be married tomorrow. Tomorrow? He can't do that to us. He's got to see that this gold shipment gets through. All right, Majors, you go right over and tell him. Not me. You do it, Waddell. I'll meet you at the office. Oh, no, that's your job. You're the head of this firm. You do it. Tell Morell I want to see him tonight. Dan 
darn funny that folks can't get hitched without having a lot of ribbons hanging all over the place. Oh, these are festoons to set off the bride. Yeah. Like as not Bill strangle himself on them before they get to the I do's. I'm running this wing ding. Who's singing? Bill. I got him serenading Louise. I'm doing everything according to Hoyle. Got himself a new pair of bridges. I'm bridesmaid. My dreams come true from the evening till the morning. Every hour I spend with you. Why can't I come in? Because Calamity says it's bad luck for the bridegroom to be in the house the day before the wedding. Yeah, but I feel like a Philly Lou bird perched out here on this rail. Come on out. I can't. I put on my wedding dress to see how I look. And Calamity says if you were to see me in it before the ceremony, it would be flying in the face of Providence. Yeah, but uh, can't you kind of slip out while she's not watching? Well, I could try. You keep on singing and I'll come out. When the shadows fall across the Rockies And the sleepy moon begins to rise Then I see your face in almost every place You are always there before my eyes When the shadows fall Across the Rockies You boys are kind of early, aren't you? The wedding isn't till tomorrow. Bill, something important's come up. Something you won't like, but uh, give me time. I'll get to the point. What are you trying to say, Mr. Majors? Bill, the government is planning a big drive to end the war and they're in desperate need of gold supplies. As you know, we have a large amount stored here. You've got to get it through. Well, is that orders, Mr. Majors? Orders, Bill. Calamity caught me red-handed. Well, Louise, I guess you know everybody here except uh, Mr. Tower. How do you do, Mr. Tower? Gentlemen? Well, I've got to get down to the corral. Well, I'll come along with you. Excuse me, gentlemen. Calamity says I'm walking right into trouble in my wedding dress. Honey, I'm going away. I'm riding east. I've got to leave right now to get things ready. But our wedding... We'll have to wait. Were you just going away without even telling me? Of course not. Louise, you must understand the importance of this. Is it more important to you than our marriage? It'll only be postponed for a little while, just till I can get this shipment of gold through. To the enemy. Louise. Yes, Bill, the enemy. I can't help being a southerner. You're taking gold through so the North can pay the army to kill my people. Yes, if you want to put it that way. But this is army business. And I've just got my orders from headquarters. Orders, orders. Well, here's an order for you. Don't come back. There's not going to be any wedding. Bill. May I see you a minute? Sure. Oh, Bill, I'm awfully sorry. Will you forgive me? <laughs> I start in forgiving you the minute you start in getting mad. You know, the last time we quarreled and I let you go, you were almost killed. We've made up this time, so if I get half killed again, it'll be my own darn fault. Oh, Bill, I'm so worried. All that gold, surely the Oakland Raiders can't help but know you're moving it. We've been doing considerable thinking along those lines. And you decided to do something? Yes, take the gold through. Couldn't you have thought of some kind of a plan to safeguard yourselves? There's no better plan than a bullet. It's sort of safe either way. Then you do expect an attack from the Raiders, and you're just going to take a chance on fighting your way out. Oh, Bill, you can't win. Then there'll be two losers. What do you mean? We're not taking the gold through. But those boxes and all your guards. Some folks might call them decoys. Well, then it's more of a fool's errand than ever. The Raiders will think you've got it, and you'll all be dead before they find out you haven't. Oh, Bill, everything's ready. I'll be right there. Suppose you quit worrying and ask Calamity to lend you a rabbit's foot, hmm? Well, 
Well, what are you going to do? Morel has his orders. You know, I'm kind of disappointed in Hickok. I thought he was smart. I still think he is. A little too smart to go off half cock with a full ship and a gold in that coach. What are you getting at? I'm not sure, but I've got what you boys call a hunch. I think I'll play it. Leaving us, Mr. Whitaker? Yep. Going out to California to get some more cayuses for them relay stations. Those Overland Raiders certainly keep you busy, huh? Yes, sir. -y. Someday, California will run out of horses, Overland Raiders will run out of raids, and I'll just naturally run out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you seem upset, Miss Mason. Anything I can do? Thank you, no. It's just that I'm so terribly afraid. No need to be. Bill Hickok will come through with flying colors. Not if the Overland Raiders raid them. No danger of that, not at all. You, you think they'll get through, then? Why, yes, of course, unless they, uh... Well, there is a chance of Southern sympathizers. Why, Mr. Towers, Southerners are not raiders. Well, in times of war, men are forced to do many things. And the South needs that gold. Enough to raid them? Desperately enough to kill them. Oh, but that mustn't happen. They're not carrying the gold. Are you sure? Yes, of course. Bill told me himself he wouldn't lie to me. Miss Mason, you've confided in the right person. You think you'll be able to do something? More than you imagine, my dear. Much more. Thank you. Say, hey, Haynes, have you seen Gabby Whitaker? Oh, yeah. Which way was he heading? Heading east on the Willow Creek Trail. They told me he was heading for California. Well, he sure wasn't. What are you so interested in Gabby for? Gabby's got that gold on that broken down outfit of his. Get a hold of Morrell and tell him to head him off quickly. Right. Ain't carrying that gold. It's just a trick. Then where is it? That old horse trader Gabby Whitaker's taking it through in his wagon on the Willow Creek Trail. Let's get that wagon. Rolling, rolling, rolling on up and down the prairie. While the moon is shining on up and down the prairie. It don't matter where we go, long as we are merry. Rolling, rolling, rolling on up and down the prairie. There's but one way to be passing time away. With the yippee-i and the yippee-o and the double yippee-a-yo. If you want to see the sights extraordinary, take your gal and take a ride up and down the prairie. I don't like the women folks. Somehow they upset me. They just take a look at me and they can't forget me. Every time I meet a man and my love has got him, I go home and hear the news. Someone came and shot him. There's but one way to be passing time away. With the yippee-i and the yippee-o and a double yippee-a-yo. Tell me, Gabby, one more thing. How'd you get so hairy? Rolling, rolling, rolling on up, up and down, down the prairie. prairie. Why? 
wagon out of here. We'll transfer the gold to the horses later. Dirty, thieving, murdering, yellow-livered sons of Satan. Well, what you yelling for? We're still alive, ain't we? Look. Come on, let's grab that critter. Stand where you are. How can he stand when he's sitting? Well, then get on your feet and stand where you are. What are we going to do with him? Shoot him? He's worth a heap more alive. We'll take him into town and make him talk. Get his gun, Calamity. He ain't got none. Well, then give him one and take it away. I mean, get him on his horse. Uh, yeah. I got a feeling something's gone wrong. If they were going to hold us up, they'd done it long before now. Maybe the raiders don't know we're taking the shipment through. That's just it. We're not taking it through. I sent it over another road with Gabby. Maybe they found out about it. That's just what we're going to find out. Hold the stagecoach here. The rest of you men follow me. One of Gabby's Indians, Hank. We've got to ride fast. They're scattered in all directions from here. No use trying to follow them. We'll head back to Hay City. Here, I'm going to see that he doesn't talk. What happened? Calamity and me accumulated ourselves one of them overland raiders. Rest of them got away and took the gold with them. I'm afraid Bill's scheme kicked back on him. Perhaps it didn't kick back. What are you driving at? Doesn't it seem rather strange to send that much gold guarded only by an old man, a girl, and some Indians? Say, if you're accusing Bill Hickok of anything crooked, why don't you do it to his face? He's coming now. Well, Hickok, they got the gold. Who besides Waddell, you and myself, knew about the plan? Well, if you'll give me about 30 minutes, I may be able to answer that. All right, go ahead. We'll be waiting. How about questioning this man? We may get the truth from him. Let's go in your office, Majors. Come down over there. You go on after Bill and keep your eyes on that end of the line. I'm going to stick around here. What's your name? Red Burke. Things look pretty bad for you, Burke. The best thing you can do is to tell the truth. You haven't got anything to be afraid of. Go ahead, speak up. Who's behind this robbery? Maybe you made a pretty good guess outside. What do you mean by that? You couldn't possibly mean Bill Hickok. Hickok's a pretty slick hombre, but I guess he isn't slick enough. He might have been slicker than you think when he asked for a half hour to straighten things out. That would give him a pretty good start. Say, maybe you're right. Arrest Hickok. If he stopped anywhere, it'll be to see his girl. Lock him up. All right, Bill, I, I guess it was my fault. Well, who did you tell? Tower. Why? Well, he, he said he could help you. Well, I think he has. Don't cry, honey. I understand. I, I just couldn't let you go. It seemed like such a foolish chance to take. Where's Bill? Inside. Him and Louise are squaring off again. Maybe I ought to marry him myself just to keep him friendly. They're coming to get him for the gold robbery. Get his horse out of sight.
I got your frame, Bill. Red's accusing you of being responsible for the gold robbery, and they're coming here to arrest you. You better get going while the going's good. Well, why should I run? I've just found out the tower's behind all this. Well, maybe he is, but you can prove it better without a rope around your neck. This horse ain't anywhere around. I'll go around back and take a look. Hurry. Quit his horse if he's going to get out. Dismount. Take your rifles. Scatter out. There's his horse. All right, Hickok. Come on, we've got you surrounded. It came from down that way.
I'd have known that Nicholas Tower was a skunk. Why, Calamity? He tipped his hat to me once. Well, a gentleman's supposed to tip his hat to a lady. That's when I should have catched on. I ain't no lady. Oh, quit bragging about yourself, Calamity. You know, Bill, that tower almost broke his neck trying to pin the blame on you. You reckon he's tied in with them Overland Raiders? All the trails lead his way. The Overland Raiders are no penny any outfit. They've got money behind them and brains. They've got strings out all over the territory. I didn't tell you about it, Bill, but that fella Red, you know, the one we brung in? He was found dead in his cell. Somebody shot him. Trouble is, we can't get a hold of the right string. When we do, we'll find Tower on the other end of it. Hey, what are you up to, Bill? I've got an idea I want to go through Tower's office. Are you plumb loco? You'll be riding smack dab into your own necktie party. Well, don't stand there gaping at me, you young squirt. We ain't gonna let him go alone, are we? Oh, stop bellering at me, you old moss back, and climb out of your cayuse if you got the strength. Uh... right in his office. Well, I've got to break it up some way. You leave that to Uncle Gabby and me. Hey, wait a minute. I got a right to know what I'm getting into. This won't be nothing new to you, you old horse thief. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and my friend, as most of you know, me and Calamity had our outfit broke up with the Overland Raider. Now, we ain't asking you to grub stakers, but Calamity here is going to put on a little show. And if any of you Christian-hearted folks like it, well, we ain't turning down no donation. This here be the first high-class entertainment seen in these parts since them actor folks put on Shakespeare's omelet. <laughs> it give me great pleasure to introduce that prairie nightingale, Calamity Jane Canary. <laughs> I'll tell you a story of fortune and glory that came to a Mexican vendor. This pea and hillbilly made wonderful chili. Each bean was delicious and tender. His crops were all bumpers of Mexican jumpers. The beans were as sprightly as L. A guy could do this, sir. Just open his kisser. The beans would jump in by themselves. Tamale! Tamale! He'd shout and he'd sell out, by golly. All over the nation, they cheered the creation of Charlie This should Charlie be good. Tamale. You bet. <laughs> His fortune was growing, but ill winds were blowing, and right with the breeze came a lady. This beautiful dolly was monikered Molly, and Molly's intentions were shady. She schemed and misled him, and then when she wed him, she took every cent in his jeans. She knew how to hook him, and all oh, how she shook him. She left him with nothing but beans. Oh, to Molly, to Molly. The dough that he made went to Molly. Poor Charlie, poor Charlie. He's paying the price for his folly. He thinks love is silly. He's back selling chili and putting his heart into Molly. <laughs> How about you, gents? You going to chip in, Southern? All right, come into my office. I'll give you some chips. You can cash them at the bar. Well, I don't know about that now. I... Go ahead, Doc. All right, Hickok. Get them up. Bill Hickok. Let's get Louise. 
They got Bill. He's down at the marshal's office. Oh, Gabby, what'll they do with him? They won't treat him like company. Is he hurt? Only his feelings. Getting caught by the local marshal ain't the kind of catching Bill's used to. They must have snuck up like a coyote. They never got to drop on him. Bill didn't come into town. Well, we got a hunch Tower knows a heap about that gold robbery. Bill was going through his office looking for evidence. Tower. Why, of course I should have known he... Come on. Bill, they can't hold you, can they? Well, I don't know. The marshal's awful set in his ways. Bill is innocent, do you hear? Yes, I hear you, miss, but I ain't paying much attention to what you're saying. Well, perhaps you will, all of you, particularly you, Mr. Tower. Listening to a charming lady is always interesting. Yes, especially when she's fool enough to give you important information. That's what I did, gentlemen. The day Bill took the stage out, I told Tower they weren't carrying the gold. Why did you tell him? Because he hinted that Bill was to be held up by Southern sympathizers, and then he might be able to prevent it. Them one no Southern gentlemen that took that gold from me. Tower couldn't have known you had it. Well, he was snooping around my outfit. Like as not, he smelled it. <laughs> I'm afraid you're trying to make me entirely too clever. It takes a smart man to guide the Overland Raiders. Are you insinuating that I had something to do with them? I believe you're their leader. <laughs> That's what I call darn plain insinuating. Your charge is serious enough, but you haven't much foundation for it. What do you say, Tower? There we go. That dude will fancy talk all of us into jail. No, I intend to be very blunt, gentlemen. She's lying. And the reason is obvious. She's engaged to Haycock and would trump up any kind of a story to save him. They're both Southern sympathizers and have been working together ever since they came here. Don't let him talk his way out of this. I, I understand Miss Mason has strong connections in the South. Her father's an officer in the Confederate Army. Yes, but if you didn't have agents all over the country, you wouldn't know it. What do you think, Marshal? Well, I certainly can't take Miss Mason's unsupported word, especially when I know she helped Hickok escape. Thank you, Marshal. And if there are any further questions, you'll find me at my place of business. Pardon me. Thank you. You ain't gonna let him go like that, are you? You're gonna kick yourself all over the county for this, Marshal. Now you listen to me. You've all done your best to help Hickok, and I don't want to have any more trouble with you. From now on, you better be careful what you do and what you say. That's all. That's enough. War's over. Lee surrendered. Here, read about it. What'd you say? Said the war's over. Lee surrendered. Well, Lee surrendered? Well, the war's over. The war's over. This is going to make a big difference. To your government, perhaps, but not mine. We'll move that gold as quickly as we can and get out of here ourselves. To California? The North and the South, both exhausted. We must strike. The armies will be demobilized with all possible haste. They're half starved. And when men are hungry, gold is a tempting commodity. Do you really intend to recruit an army and take over California? My friend, you don't expect me to take it over single-handed. No, of course not. I'm with you, Tower, but what about this here Mr. Lincoln? I'm wondering what he might do. This here Mr. Lincoln might do many things, if he had the time. Well, I'm glad to hear you sold your place to profit. I hate to see you go, Tower. Well, now that the war is over, I think there are better opportunities in California. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye and good luck. Goodbye. Bye. Morning, Bill. Hello, Calamity. Where's Tower going? He's pulling out for California. <laughs> the bet he's got that gold with him. I wish I could prove it. That here's the latest. Came in on the morning stage. Death to all tyrants. John Wilkes Booth. Say, Gabby, John Wilkes Booth's signature was on a letter I saw in Tower's office. He closed it by saying death to all tyrants. Do you realize what that means? Tower's tied in with a nationwide plot to wreck the Union. The whole Union, eh? You don't say. Well, I've got to get out of here. Yeah, but how? I got an ID. Get ready for whatever happens. Calamity, you go get them horses.
find that around the bar. All right, Steve, get going. We're gonna stop all them fellas. Can't we surround them? Nah. It looks like Morell and his whole gang. Well, if it is, the smartest thing we can do is learn to love them. Chances are the marshal's trailing us. We'll go back. You can't do that. You'll be sticking your neck in the noose again. Well, he's got to listen to me this time. and raiders are making a getaway with that stolen gold. And this is another one of your tricks? It's the truth to help me. We just seen him with our own eyes. All right, Hickok. I'll give you another chance, but you better be right this time. This way. Something's happened. There's a posse following us. They don't look peaceful. We better run for it. They've seen us. much I can say to you, Hickok, but I don't forget very easy. Well, that's all right with me. I'm pretty forgetful myself, Marshal. But if you ever need me to do a good turn, don't forget to jog my memory. How about paying for that stagecoach you wrecked? I said jog it, not jolt it. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have a cowboy wedding when the sage is all abloom. To the mountains we'll be heading for our sunny honeymoon. We're gonna drink in all the sunshine along the banks of some cool stream. 
Just to laugh and play the live long day, build a cabin of our dreams. We want to hear guitars a-ringin' when they play our wedding tune. Down the aisle you'll find a swingin' in the early part of June. Within a year we have no fear, a lullaby will croon. We're gonna have a cowboy wedding when the sage is all... Majors and Waddell are coming. If you're ever gonna get married, you better not let them catch you again. Have you seen Bill Hickok? No, and what's more, you ain't gonna see him neither. They've absconded, eloped, departed, and left for parts unknown. Well, uh, that's too bad. We got a wedding present for him. Huh? Yeah, the reward money for cleaning out the Overland Raiders. Why, I... Uh... 